Uh, and the next example, same idea here, but now we have something raised to the fifth power. And one thing I like, I think is a common element, I give these problems to students and they see something to the fifth power, I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do the fifth power. I can factor a quadratic, but then, then just give up and they don't even try. First thing, guys, we know we're trying to find the zeros. So let's rewrite the definition of the zeros. f of x has to equal to 0. Right? Easiest step you can possibly provide that I can say, ooh, this person understands the definition of a 0. They know that the values of x where f of x is equal to 0. Right? So you want to make sure you tell me that you understand that you understand the definition of zeros. Right? So you want to rewrite this. Now, you could obviously skip this and go into a factored form. That's fine. Um, and then the next step is let's factor out common terms, right? Because I think that's the easiest type of factoring that we can start with. And again, you guys can see this is an example of um, they all share an x. So we factor out an x. Now we come into a unique situation here. We have something that is not a linear factor that we still need to factor down further. And we look at this and say, all right, how do I factor something raised to the fourth power? And the best way I can think about this, guys, is let's just forget about this being um, a quadratic. Let's forget about this being to the fourth power. Let's just take this trinomial and let's just think of it as a quadratic. Right? Let's just pretend it's this problem. Just for a second. Just pretend it's that problem. If we think about that problem, we say, all right, how can we factor that? Well, I previously did that factoring, right? Because obviously, and you guys did, what, 80 problems I gave you? One of them was one of these problems. So if you did those 80 examples that I gave you, you'd probably look at this blink and say, oh, this is x minus 1 and x minus 4. I'll put the factors up here. You guys would agree that this is the factored form of that, right? This times this gives you that. The problem is, we need this times this to give us that. So it's important here, negative 1 times negative 4 still needs to give us a positive 4 up here. right? The difference is my x times my x needs to give me x to the fourth rather than x squared. So what powers should I raise these up to? 3 and 1, right? Because 3 plus 1 is 4. That works, right? Yes. It does work. The problem that it doesn't work on is when you multiply your, when you multiply your inner terms, they need to combine to an x squared meaning I need to have common powers of x squared. So if I raise my powers, or raise the power, or raise my factors, or the raise the power of my variables, you can see this works. And again, if you're not sure, just check it out. Just test it out. Let's do this. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x times negative 4x is negative 4x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x squared. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Do you guys see how this combines to give you that problem? Right? So we just factored it. Sweet. So it's really the same process. We just need to kind of make a little bit connect, just alter it a little bit. Um, but however, we're still not done. We haven't written this as a linear factorization. These are not linear factors. And this is one of the main mistakes that I see students make is they'll say, oh, oh, I know the zeros. The zeros are 0, 1, and 4, where these have a multiplicity of 2, because they see the power of 2, and they say that's the multiplicity. But again, guys, the definition of multiplicity is a linear factor. It's the power of the linear factor. So what that means is we need to factor these again. And hopefully, out of those 80 examples, you remember seeing x squared minus 1, which, is the, which we can factor using the Perfect. close, the other one. Close, the other one. Difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. So if you guys think of this one as x times x minus 1 times x plus 1, x squared minus 4 can be written as x minus 4 times x plus 4. Now I have rewritten these as a product of their linear factors. Do you guys agree that each and every one of these powers? Huh? All of these are linear factors x squared minus 1 gets factored down to x minus 1 x plus 1. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to actually quite factor that. Thank you. Good catch. So now, is it much easier for me to identify the zeros here? Right? So I could say the zeros are 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. And these all have a multiplicity equal to 1. So the zeros are not 1 and 2, or 1 and 4, um, with multiplicities of 2. They're not repeated. 
right? And what we'll do is we'll look at some examples of the, we'll look at some other examples where you see this repetition happening, all right? Um, and then if we just wanted to write the linear factorization as a function, we just rewrite everything as our linear factors. Okay. All right, so I did some instruction first. 